So this is a part one of our three-part series for the 15 surefire ways to boost productivity in your landscape company. So today our hosts are myself, Dan Weaver. I'm an account manager here with Dynascape Software. And we're going to have Patrick Duchesne, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, the owner of Duchesne Design Solutions and a longtime user of Dynascape Design. So he's going to walk us through um, our webinar today, again, going through the five design tools for increasing your productivity. So part, part one of our session today will be how to easily create a great-looking plant picture catalog. The second thing that we're going to be going through today is how to create a construction document from your design plan. Number three, we're going to be going through exporting your plants and material lists to an Excel or Word document right from your design plan. Number four, we're going to go through maximizing efficiency using the figure library in Dynascape Design. And number five, we're going to show you how to quickly and easily create your beautiful garden beds using a couple of tricks that Patrick Duchesne will share with you guys today. Before we start, guys, I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping. So we have um, all three of these webinars will actually be recorded. So in case you do have to run out or miss a part of it or anything like that, we will be recording these and sending them out as well as uh, posting them to our Dynascape website. We will have time at the end of this session for some questions and answers. So if you guys could, uh, if you have any questions um, for myself or Patrick, please use the control panel. Um, on GoToWebinar there, there's a text box there for questions. Uh, I'll filter through them to the best of my ability here and answer uh, a couple at the end. And then if we miss anything, of course, then we'll, uh, I'll give you my email address and you can give me a, or give me a call and we can discuss any questions uh, after the session. So I'm going to pass this over to Patrick Duchesne now, um, the owner of Duchesne Design Solutions, um, and he will take you on a journey through Dynascape Design. Enjoy. Okay. So, Dan, here we go. You see my screen okay, Dan? I do. Okay, perfect. Okay, well, welcome, everybody. Um, I am actually wasn't scheduled to do the webinar today. Joe Salemi was going to give you the tricks, but he had a uh, another engagement that kind of conflicted, so I'm happily filling in for Joe Salemi, and those are pretty big shoes to fill, so hopefully hopefully I do okay. Anyway, so we're going to go through the five items that they put on the agenda for today. I'm going to show you all of those. They're not going to be in that exact order because there um, are certain things you do before others to get to certain things. And then I'm going to show a couple of other a couple of other features that kind of coincide with what I'm doing. So this drawing is what we're going to work on today. And I did this for a customer last week. And I figured it would be perfect because I already have the drawing colored right here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to label some of these plants. And we're going to um, create a plant packet, which I call. Um, and uh, do some do some uh, plant takeoffs for this, and do a few other things. Teach you kind of refresh your brain about the update presentation tool, and do some dimensioning. So, none of these things are rocket science, but it sounds like as of lately there were quite a few requests to refresh people's memories on these. So they are everything we're doing is they're all in my old webinars, but it doesn't hurt to just do kind of a refresher. So now. Um, we won't really get into much of color setup because that's really not part of what today is. But you'll notice when I draft, you're going to see all of these areas are closed areas. And that is because they are ready to accept color. There is a new function here, which is this tool that says generate an outline by selecting an interior location. 
I don't use it because I'm so ingrained with doing it the way I learned how to do it and the way it was before that, that that's just how I do it and that's how a lot of people do it. So everything is closed and ready to go. And everything, all of my plants are grouped. So all of these specific plants I click, you're going to see in certain areas of the drawing, they're all going to highlight. Um, now, before they're grouped, they look like this. They're all individually split apart. So to group these plants, it's, I call it the spilled milk tool, but because it looks like a puddle of spilled milk, but it's really the cluster tool. So when you click on this and unselect the check mark and select all the plants you want to group with your left click and then your right click, it puts them all together. That's crucial for your plant labeling because um, it's going to auto count everything for you. So you want to make sure you do this to save yourself having to do a lot of manually. Um, I'm going to turn my Dropbox off here so we don't get interruptions. So you don't have to manually do all the counting. We all know that the more manual counting you do, the more mistakes you make. So once everything is grouped, we go into the plant soft state labeler. And this has a couple of different options here. When you click on settings, you can either pull from your local favorites that you can set up. You can, let's say you have a manage, uh, Dynascape manage, you can pull from your manage website, legacy quote. I'm not even sure if that works anymore. I, I, don't, I don't know, like um, quote was the old estimating software. So I'm not really sure what that works with. But um, initially, when you do your searching, you're going to search in Dynascape.com. And you can send those and create favorites, which I'm not going to get into today, but that is in one of my webinars. Once you have created your favorites, though, you will work out of your plan. Mine are in my plants, but you could save them right in your favorites, too. It's really kind of the same thing. So uh, let's, let's start figuring out what we want to label these plants as. Well, before we do that, though, let's run ourselves a couple guidelines down the side to run these labels to. And you'll see why I did two in a second. So let's make these um, Green Giant Arborvitae. So let's type in Green Giant. There they are. There's the size that I specified. I'm going to click Go. You are not going to click insert, and here's what happens. If you click insert and you run this over, look at what it does. It's giving you one. This is not uncommon for me even to get emails that says, I'm grouping them, I'm clicking the plant list thing, and I keep getting one. It's not counting right. And I'm asking what they're clicking, and they're clicking insert. If you're doing something like boulders, or maybe flats of Vinca or ground cover, this is really the only time I ever use that. If I'm doing a, a ground cover area and I know it's going to need eight flats, that is when you do your eight, when you want to do a little bit more manual that way. But you don't want to do that for the large masses. So you select the plant, you click go. Click on the plant and run your label over to the side. Next plant, let's make these Dutzia. Go in here. Here's the cool thing about the plant list um, labeler. All you have to do is type in the first few letters of that. So let's do Slender Dutzia 18 to 24. We click Go. Run this over. Okay, we're going to do about seven or eight of these. So let's make these Endless Summer Hydrangea. So let's type in Endless. And there's Endless Summer Hydrangea. Let's do a number three. Pretty darn easy. Imagine having to manually count this. This is a really cool feature of this software that things like AutoCAD don't have. They don't do auto counting, so I'm told. Uh, let's make these Okami cherries. Okami. Run that out to the side. OK. Let's see, a plant packet. Our plant catalog has six um, plants per sheet, so let's do six 
plant. Let's make these, um, let's make those Stella Dora Day Lilies. So all we have to do is type in Stella, and there it is. Do number, now let's do number twos. Number two survives better when you plant them than number ones do. Okay, last, let's make these Lorapi maybe. So let's look at Lorapi. So there's probably variegate, variegated and regular that I have saved. Okay, so there are my plant labels. Um, now, let's just throw a couple things in the mix here really quick so I show you the staggering because it's, it's kind of another cool thing. Um, covered, let's just write covered outdoor kitchen and let's run that label out to here. Let's run this like walkway from um, main patio to downstairs steps. Downstairs steps. Basement. That sounds better. To basement. Okay? So we're going to run that here. Okay? Now, I need to adjust this. Let's click control. If you hold down control and click on the words, it brings this up. And I can adjust this. Don't retype it. There, I fixed it. So now I just stagger my labels. I'm going to run this one out here. I'm going to take this one. I'm going to run this one over here. Take this one, run it over here. And take this one and run it over here. Delete my label leader, whatever, my um, guidelines. And now we have kind of a nice um, staggered arrangement of our plants. So let's save this. Save often, please. Um, so now we have our plant material in here, sort of. It's not all of it. And we want to make a plant catalog or plant packet. So up here, we go to File, Export, Plant Picture Catalog. Now, let me say something about this. For a while, I was having problems with resolution issues where I would do this and the whole screen would shrink, it would go haywire. And if you notice in a lot of my previous um, webinars, I have not been making plant packets because that was a problem, but it's been fixed. Um, the last couple updates, this was addressed and taken care of, so now there's no more problem. So these pictures, are pictures that I have saved in my favorites. Now this one I didn't reassign because I go through computers like meals, I guess. But um, this is Endless Summer. So I'm gonna type in Endless Summer Hydrangea and there is the plant I wanna show for Endless Summer. All of the other ones, the, so this is kind of stock from Dynascape. But if you want to put in your own picture, you go to custom picture and you find that picture. So this allows you, if you don't want to show certain plants, you can keep them out. And one um, example of when you would do that is if you're doing a master plan, but you only want to show the plants for the front yard, maybe they're only going to do the front this year. And you, there's no need to confuse somebody with showing the plants in the backyard in your packet because they're going to wonder where these are and it's not really, it's not in the plan for right now. So um, you can dictate which plants you want to show, but obviously for this one, we're going to show all of them. So now we click next and we're going to say um, Weaver Residence Plant Selection, plant pack, let's put, what do they call them there, Dan, plant? <laughs> I never remember what the right word is. What is it, plant? Oh, well. That's the plant, the plant picture plant. catalog. Okay, yeah, I want to do that so I don't get in trouble by support. So, yeah, there Weaver you go. resident, <laughs> plant <laughs> picture catalog. Okay. You can dictate or designate whether you want to show your common name or botanical. So I like to just show common names because most people really don't care what the botanical name is anyway, unless it's somebody who's really into their plants and they'd like to see that. 
in that case, you do that. But for, I think for the majority of clients, common name is perfectly fine. So we're going to click Finish. And it's making the packet. So now we're just going to save it as, let's just call it Plant Catalog. I'm not doing anything other than just pushing a couple buttons, and there it is. Perfect. It's all on one sheet, nice arrangement, real professional looking. Um, you know, anybody who's built these in Microsoft Word or Photoshop or something knows that as you get more plants, this can really be a tedious task. And I've heard of people spending 45 minutes to an hour making these for every um, drawing, which is just absolutely painful to hear when there's so many easier ways to do it. So this is the easy way to do it. So now we have a plant catalog. Let's say now we want to put our images on our drawing. There's a very easy way to do it, which is this tool right here, which I'm going to go through real quick. You click on this, you left click and right click, and you can put your pictures into your drawing. I want to show you a different way because it's been years and years, but one night I was just laying in bed thinking about how I could automate this quicker with getting pictures on drawings. And what I thought of was if I can put artwork on my drawing as JPEGs and now PDF, why can't I just put a big image of the plant picture catalog? So here's what we do. This is a great website. There's Donald Trump. Um, there's a website called PDF to JPEG Online, or this, right here. Everybody, you should write this down. It's a free website. I have a client in Oklahoma. I gave him this website the day after he spent $30 on a PDF converter, which I don't know if he ever got his money back. But this is a great site. I've used this. I can't even, I don't even know how long I've used it. It's a long time. But it's free. So we're going to choose a PDF file to convert. So we're going to click this. We're going to go to Desktop, and we're going to click that file. Don't worry about going to Excellent. Just do 150 DPI and click Convert. It's going to save it, or it's going to convert it. We're going to download it and save it. Okay? So then we're just going to open the file and find where that is. We're going to cut it from here, and let's just put it on our desktop. Minimize all this stuff, OK? I'll go through this again at the end if you need to. Um, but the good thing is it's recorded. So right now, here is our JPEG. But I don't want to bring this stuff in. I want to crop all this stuff out. So anybody, well, everybody who's using Dynascape is using a Windows operating system. And so if you right click and you select open with paint. Right here we click select. We draw a box around our plant. We right click and we crop it. And because I saved it as plant catalog, I'm just going to click X and I'm going to save it. So now look what I have. Now I have exactly what I want. So in my drawing, let's shift this a little bit. Let's take all of this stuff, because I want to make room for my plant picture catalog. And I'm going to go to this tool right here. This is in imaging. And this is where you bring all your surveys, your pictures, and artwork. Insert a raster image, logo, or survey. I'm going to select that. In that file, and I'm going to click, click, and bring all those plants in at one, sh in one shot. So that saved me a lot of time arranging plants. And then just for a little bit for presentation purposes, I'll draw a box around this thing. It's not perfect, but that's well. No, I, I can't. I can't stand having those gaps. Click this corner, click this corner, and then offset this. 
Sometimes it depends on your drawings. You have to fiddle with it. But let's offset it like two feet. That works. And then to walk because it looks good on the drawing. I actually change all my text to walkway layer, which can cause some problems when you get into dimension modes and stuff like that. But um, I like to change it to walkway. I'm not suggesting it to people. It's just what I do. Um, and then this image, we want to put that back in the box. So there's the backyard pond and fountains. We'll put this back in. OK, so there's our plant images on our drawing. So imagine if you have, I don't know, 18, 24 pictures. First of all, you want to really be careful putting that many pictures on a drawing because it starts to congest your drawing. And I am really starting to see a trend with a large amount of my clients. They really don't want pictures on the drawing. They just want a nice, elegant, clean look with a separate plant picture catalog. So um, you do what you want. It, it's, all, it's all up to you. But this is a really good way to bring these in. So I'm going to save this. Now we want to know, uh, let's say we need to get uh, pricing from a vendor, or we need to bring this into a proposal. So there's a, really, a couple of really cool things here. Right here is the, the icons for Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. Um, I think there was a new update that makes it compatible with Google Docs, maybe, I think. Um, you'd have to look up the release notes, but I think that is kind of a new thing. So you're not tied into Word and Excel if you don't use Microsoft products. But so as long as these are labeled out of our favorites, let me let me let me do something else too. Let me show you this. Let's do uh, these two trees. Let's say two columnar oaks. All right. Now there's a good reason I'm showing you this. It looks normal, right? Everything looks like real plants. I've labeled them all. This I didn't label correctly, but watch what happens when I export this as I'm going to do common name, size, and price, and I'm going to do it to Excel, and I'm going to save it to the desktop. Weaver, Weaver plants. Okay, so look at this. Uh, these are all the plants in my drawing. These are all the sizes. Now. In my favorites list, if I really wanted to, which I don't do it because there's just no way. I, I get, I'm doing too many drawings for too different, many different people to really justify putting plants in here because everybody's are different. But if you are working for one company, in the um, you can set up unit pricing for all of these. So when this spits this out, if this said five dollars, look at what it's doing. It's calculating this for me. So for a number 18 to 24, let's do like a $32 plant. For a two-gallon Bellador Daylily, you might pay what? $7, eight bucks. Endless Summer Hydrangea number three, maybe, I don't know, $35. Liriope for number one, sometimes you can get those for $5, sometimes even less. Okami Cherry, let's do 145. Green Giant Arborvitae, 60. Seven. Um, I don't even remember how much those are anymore, but let's do like, who knows, $125. Okay, so uh, we have all of these unit prices. It automatically calculated it, and look what it did. It gave us a total. So this is good for a couple reasons. You could send this to your vendor so you don't have to type all this stuff out, and they can put pricing on it. This also you can generate some really quick budget estimate kind of things where, you know, for construction, like residential design build, it, it's not the correct way to estimate. But on average, when, you, when everything in overhead and labor is figured in, you normally end up somewhere around three and a half times the price of a plant times 2466. So, you could really quickly tell your customer, based on the plants I have right now, not all the mulch and everything else, but based on your plant material 
it's going to be somewhere around $8,500 for us to bring these in and put them in and to warranty them. So for, for designers who may not necessarily be that good at knowing what things cost to build or, 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 or design, this is a really good quick check for you to run this through and see where we are because you know sometimes builders will give you we have ten thousand dollar budget for plants we have five thousand for sod and we have twenty five hundred dollars for pavers or something like that this can give you a good idea of where you are so that's giving you numbers so here's another cool thing let's say you are doing your estimate on on a word document you can also export this as a word document let's not do price and let's export it and let's save this as weaver plants so now this is already done so if you are in a another proposal i can just copy all of this plus this copy it and let's just pretend this is another proposal. If I right click this and paste, oop, hold on. Uh, let's see. Huh. <laughs> it's not doing what I wanted it to do. Um, let's see, let's go down here. No, it's not doing what I wanted to do, and I don't know why. Um, but normally it will just bring this in for you nicely and list all of these plants. It might be, I think this has to do with a font setting I have in Windows to make things different. So it will work on your computer. I just have this thing set up weird. But so this is a great way to bring these plants in to a proposal and you're not manually typing everything too. So that's the export function. And it's really easy to find because there's a W for Word and an X for Excel. So we've done plant picture catalogs, and we have done um, the output of our quantities. So let's do, um, let's show, we've got to build this thing now. Um, we've got to send this to our crew. So in this little icon, let's go back here. This little icon here, when you highlight display the mode list. When I click this and I go to dimension mode, look what happens. All my plants disappear. It cleans up all the stuff that we don't need for dimensioning. Um, I even take out furniture unless it's built in like a, well, fire pit, I guess you could kind of consider it furniture, but I get rid of everything that I really don't need. And this is a great way to show your crews how to build this. So if this deck and steps are here now, and we need to show them how they're working their way all around this for, for to build, in the, up here, there's something that says DIM, dimension. These are all your dimension tools. So this one goes, it's a free-for-all, any way you want, unless you have your constraints on, which does this. Or, you hold shift and control at the same time, and that's what I call constraints on the fly. Okay, so this is a no-brainer. That's obvious too. So we want to show the crew how far out this has to go. So we're going to click, let me just slow down. We're going to click this point here. We'll click this point there, and we'll left click and right click. It shows in that dimension. Or try to keep it to straight inches, not halves, if you can get away with the dough. Um, then let's give them this dimension. Perfect. Now, there are some short distances where you're not going to be able to do this. See how that's in the middle? If the dimension, I can't remember what the distance is, but there's a certain magic cutoff. If it's shorter than a certain number or length, you can't throw these in the middle. So. There's that dimension. So you can work your way around. So here's the center of this arch from these steps. And I want to show the crew from the center of the existing steps, see, with my inference on, 
shift on shift gives you inference on the fly too. But let me use the tabs. So we click the midpoint here, we go all the way up and hit this point, and we hover this down, we left click and right click. So this tells our crew, from this point out, you need to measure 18 foot four and a half gets you to this point. Okay? Um, how about, I don't know, if we want to stack these dimensions and uh, do what you've seen on plans where they layer kind of themselves, or really stack. This is kind of the stacking um, dimensioning. So let's click here. Let's click here. How about here? And how about there? And then we right click one. This takes some real practice and kind of muscle memory and click. So now my crew, this is, this is bad what I did. See how this runs right through that line? That can get a little confusing. So let's do that again and get that line off of that edge. So let's hover it more like that, okay? So now they can see that. So this is pretty cool because now, very quickly, they know how far it is from here to this point, how far it is from here to this point, and here to that point. Uh, if you have a radius, um, let's, uh, how about we have, I don't know. We need to put a trampoline out here because this is actually, there is a trampoline out here. And we want to know where to put the trampoline. So we could measure off the corner of this house to the center. So starting on this point, we move this over and find this midpoint. See this? It tells me the origin. And we click this and then slide this back down. Oops. And let's sit it right there, okay? So right now the crew needs, they know, they have to go over 11 foot three, and then to get to the center, they're gonna go from this point here up to the origin, which is here, which is 32 foot 10. So that you can use for anything circular, a patio or a tree ring, or um, if you're gonna put in a who knows, whatever. Anything that has to do with a round surface or a round bed edge or a round patio edge, that's what you do. So this is where you show um, centers of circles. So when I was doing a lot of, uh, when I was running crews and I was doing a lot of these dimension plans, it's, it's, there's kind of a real art to doing this without making it look really, really congested where it looks like complete chaos. So what I started doing, even though it was a little bit slower, I would go and do what we did. I'd get these dimensions, but then I would just put, um, I would go type this. I would say, here's another little trick that I've done before in these webinars, to do half inches. We go four dash, well, let's just do, let's just do four inches, make it easy, four inches. So here's our four inch, okay? Let's do six foot one and a half. So we go six dash one divided by two, that's six foot, nah, six and a half. Let's just make it an easy six because I don't do half inches anymore. Six, let's do six foot one, six foot one. Apply. Okay, so there's six foot one. We're just gonna make these easy with regular numbers. There's a 12, and what's this one here? Let's run this there, corner to corner. That is five feet, okay? So, we're gonna type in five feet. Apply, okay. So, then I just get rid of these, and then I take these numbers, however they need to rotate with the rotate tool, and I'll rotate these. So whichever way this thing is sitting, it's pointing to that. And the guys liked this a lot better because all they had to do was measure out, that's not four inches, that's four feet. Four feet, okay. So like this one here, you could also just measure it with this tool, the measure tool, 
that's three foot four. So we type in three foot four, apply, sit it here, and then rotate it. Okay? So that will show the guys exactly what all these are. And see how much cleaner this is than having all of these. I mean, you do need some of these, but I think this is a nicer, cleaner way to do your dimensioning. So a couple more things. Curved bed line. Uh, curved bed lines is probably, I think, the hardest thing to teach when teaching this software. Um, there is a tool that you can use, which is the smooth polyline tool that does this stuff. I have never been able to use that tool, and out of knowing Dynascape users for 13, 12 or 13 years, there's a very small handful of people that use it, and I just don't use it. So I want to show you a couple different ways to do curved bed lines. So let's get rid of these cars, because they're just a distraction right now. Um, and we have a door that we're going to put here. And we have a door. Let's get rid of this. And let's say that we want to run it a walkway to there. And we want the walkway four feet wide. So here are two ways that you can do this. And you want to approach this from the thought of if any of you took drafting, if you're in design or landscape architecture, like one of the first things we did the first year was we learned how to write letters <laughs> like perfectly. And we also learned how to draw really nice curved bed lines. And so we don't want coat hanger curves, as they're called. And coat hanger curves are where you cannot run a perfect circle through it. It ends up being more like an elliptical bend, which I don't. I don't like, and I know it really doesn't <laughs> matter what I don't like, but I don't think they look smooth. They're difficult for crews to lay out, and they disrupt, um, they disrupt a smooth um, movement through a drawing. So you want to try to avoid those if you can. You can't always avoid them, but try to. So here is one way to do it. So imagine yourself, first of all, you have to think of, in your head, and you know, if you do what I'm doing, just kind of run your mouse around. Just, you know, just like you would with a pencil. And I'm thinking I'm going to bring it, I don't know, up and down. So um, here's kind of the method that I've been using. If you hold down this polyline tool, click and hold, this is a freehand tool. And if you put one foot in here, Watch what I can do. You got it, it's gonna take practice. So it's gonna go all over the place when you do it. And you're gonna think it's like a it's like a garden hose on full blast, just flailing away. But when you can control it, it is awesome. So one foot, and I'm just going to bring this out like this. Okay. It looks awful. Um, just horrible and please don't ever submit a drawing with this kind of stuff because it's just bad but you can turn this into something pretty cool so watch what I can do I want this to come out straight and I'm going to kind of run it from the center because what I want to do after I run this walkway is offset this line two feet over to each side if I'm going to do four foot I'm going to run this out and then I'm going to, I'm going to kind of bridge these. And what I'm trying to do is imagine when I click this point and I push that middle point of the polyline, it kind of hugs that. So we're going to push this here, and let's run that to there. Okay. Now watch what I can do. I'm going to run this one up and run this down. I can already tell you. Well. Actually, yeah, it's going to work right. So look what I have. Look how perfect this is. And actually, it's not super perfect. But it's pretty darn good, right? So this, to me, is a little too much. That's good. See how I have this corner here? I don't want this. So I can shift this point down a little bit, clean that up, and it's pretty darn good. Not bad. 
So now, look what I can do. I'm going to offset this two feet. I'm going to offset this two feet. And now I have my perfect walkway that I can do something like this now. If I wanted to run it like that, if I wanted to even bring this in a little bit more, I run those, pull this in a little bit, pull this in a little bit, and then just trim these out. And do the same thing here. Run this one here, like this. And then if you're really being particular, which you should be, run a line through here, trim this out, and then mirror this from the center point so your radiuses or radii match perfectly, and then trim these out. Okay? That's awful, isn't it? Right there. That's bad. But, you know, do it again, you probably do a lot better. So let me just do that again. Um, and let me do like a different scenario. Let's say I'm going to do a nice big landscape bed all around this place for a, um, for a landscape planting. So hold this down again. Let's do like two feet. And, and the bigger the number you put in here, it's like the less water is going through that garden hose. So it's, it's more controllable. So when you run, look what I can do. I'm just going to bring this up, bring this over. And let's do something like that, okay? Pretty awful. However, I'm going to run this up. I'm just going to bridge these arches and run this over. Now check this out. Push this in. Push this up. i tell you right now, it's going to be too far out. Okay? Bring this in. Bring this. Up, take this away, and look at that bed line. Pretty darn good, right? Now, we've got an angle right here, which I don't like, so let's fix it. Pretty good. And, hey, let's do a patio off of here. It's kind of a nice organic patio. Let's do two feet. Does that work pretty well? Do, 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 do. Like this. Pretty ugly again, but that's okay. It's close enough. Bridge these points like this, and look what I can create now. There, there. See what I'm doing? I'm just, you, and you don't want inference on, because you don't want to match this ugliness. You want to clean these up. And now when I get rid of this, look at my nice patio, which is a completely not functional patio at all. However, the lines are really smooth, okay? So that's one way. Another way is if you are good enough to just run circles. So let's say I want to run the, the bed line off there. The other method is you grab circles. And this is kind of how I started doing curves. And I want to bring this in, but I want this to be kind of a big radius here. And then I want to kind of pull this up there. And then I can cheat and just run this like this. Okay? So you can all see probably where I'm going with this. We can run this up to there. Remember I said bridge these, hit these where those touch where I could push that center point of the polyline and then run this up here, run this down here, run this up here and get rid of my guide, my guideline. I got to push one more point. Get rid of this old one. And so I've done the same thing, just a different method. So there's kind of an angle there, so I could clean that up. So there's a couple different ways you're going to get extremely frustrated practicing this. This takes a little bit of time, but if you can discipline yourself over a two to three hour period to just practice, 
it will start becoming instinct where I've been doing this so long, um, when you throw a circle in, it's usually pretty close to the right size that you want to do. You know, you just, you just know what you want and you go right to it. You push your points up and you're, you're in good shape. So that's the circle method. Please try to practice it because it's, they're great, quick ways of doing it. Um, so we got the curves. Okay, last, and then I'm, I'm good. And then, um, Dan, if there's any questions, you can take it away. Um, I want to show you just something really quick. Uh, there are ways in the figure libraries to arrange these libraries in the order of which order in which you want them to show, and you can organize these figures to be where you want them to. So when you go to the library manager, and you're on architectural accessories, when you click any one of these, you see these little buttons? I can move this up, and I can move this up. Or let's go and click here and go to shrubs. Let's say that I love to use this one, which I don't. But if you did, you could move this one left and right. So that's how you organize your, boy, where's that coming from? Um, you can organize the order of these. You also can go into your library manager and click the button that says sort. And look at this. Let's say you do a lot of pools and you get sick and tired of, well, pools isn't even that bad, actually. Uh, you do a lot of ponds. So I could take my pond details or pond accessories and move these all the way up to the top. And let's move up, uh, let's say you do a lot of fireplaces. Fireplaces. Um, Actually, no, let's do irrigation heads. Move those all the way up the ladder, all the way to the top. If you goof up and you wanted it behind there, you can do that. And so as soon as I click OK and I go to my libraries, look what's up top. So that really can speed you up. Let, uh, if you, if you want to undo that, though, you just go to the library manager and you go to sort and see where it says reset, this will reset the library arrangement back to the order it was when you bought the software. I never rearrange mine because when I'm trying to show people how to use it, I try to my computers look just like theirs. So you can also right click on these, add them to favorites. Let's add this to favorites. Let's add a table to favorites. So when you go to favorites, here are your favorites. And it gets even better because I can right click on this one and move this up too. So if you're a user who's been using this for a long time and you reorganize these, you're going to have a little bit of a time where you're not going to be that proficient because your brain is so programmed where these things are. You almost have to relearn where they are. Um, if you're a new person using this, Customize this right out of the box the way it um, the way uh, the way you want it so it, it works best for you with what you're doing so um, that's pretty much everything I was going to go through some a couple other things but I know everybody's time is very valuable right now and everybody's slams busy so I don't want to take any more time than we need to of your day so can well, I hand thanks. it back over to you Dan yeah thanks very much Patrick that was uh... That was very helpful, I'm sure, to our user base there, and uh, want to thank you for your time there. We do have a couple of questions. Um, if you have a quick second to maybe answer a few, um, I've the got very five, first I've got five seconds. You got you got five <laughs> seconds. All right, let's make this quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got the first question here. Um, can the clusters be ungrouped once uh, once they're grouped? Can you ungroup them? Yes, so we, we um, have that I edit tool there. Part. Yeah, it's uh, it's called the unspilled milk tool. It's right. Um, it's called uncluster. This is a monumental, earth-shattering tool 
that they came out with not super duper long ago. So if you have a group plant and you select them and you hit that, it breaks them apart. Simple as that. That's it. So maybe show them the process there. It goes and just show them the tool okay. there. It's on the edit. It's on the edit box, right? Yep. So let's yeah. say that you put. Let's say that you have a circumstance where you have three plants here, and you have a hydrangea sitting there, and somehow when you group these, you put them all. You put them all together. It's going to really mess you up in many different ways. So before this tool, oh my goodness you had to do some surgery. But now, you just select what you want to um, ungroup and hit the tool, and they're done. Or, you can hit the tool and left click and right click. Either way does it. And then, you can go back and make sure you group the right things correctly and get that guy by with his other, with his buddies, you know, his other hydrangeas or whatever that's, they are. That's perfect, thanks for doing that. And the other question looks like you may have answered it, but um, we have here: Does does the um, when you were doing the the figure the figure counts there, when you're moving everything mm -hmm. up and up and down um, on your figure library, um, they wanted to know: Is it going to stay like that uh, on every plan going forward, or is it just saved to that partic that particular plan in that order? No, I I I think this is system wide. Um, Let's let's experiment. The the way you figure these things out, you you Absolutely. experiment. So, um, let's move this. Let's split the air conditioners apart. Okay, get them away from each other, and let's just make sure that they are away from each other. Okay, they're away from each other. So we're going to close down the software, and now we're going to open it back up. Let's close. Let's see. Let me do this. I can't see the X. Go back, start a new drawing, go to our figure library, and there, there they, they are. are. So this, yep. yeah, this is a system-wide and not a per-drawing setting. Perfect. Thanks Which is good. Time. That would Absolutely. stink if it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> no, it was all good. Thank you for that. Appreciate the questions, guys. Um, that was the two questions that we had that came up that were, uh, um, that you answered great. Thanks for doing that. Um, You're welcome. If you guys um, wanted to tune in uh, next week, so Pat, thank you again for your time. Thank you, thank you to everybody who joined today. Hopefully, you learned uh, a couple of tips and tricks. This will be recorded, guys, so um, you are good to go. Uh, with that, uh, we will be posting that on our website, and everything will be there for you. So that's uh, so you're in good hands there. We do have a um, the, the second part of of this uh, webinar um, coming up here. And that's going to be coming up on um, next Tuesday, uh, May 16th. And um, basically what we're going to be doing here is uh, going over the five business tips for effective management. So next Tuesday, May 16th at 2 o'clock, same time. Um, definitely come in and join us for that. Uh, we're going to be going through the internal communications using tasks, um, going through some sales management techniques. Um, using kits in Manage 360 to speed up um, accurate estimating, um, managing change orders as well, so any changes to an amendments to any contracts, how to manage that, and some tips on that, and of course essential reporting for, uh, for managerial, managerial reports and things like that for job profitability. And uh, guys, thank you again. My name is Dan Weaver. Uh, I'm an account manager here at Dynascape. If you have any other questions, feel free to give me a uh, call or send me an email dweaver at dynascape.com. Um, you can visit our website at dynascape.com as well as we have uh, the toll-free number here for, um, for any questions at 1-800-710-1900 and extension 2 actually here for sales. Patrick, thanks again. You guys should visit Patrick's uh, website as well, duchainedesignsolutions.com there. And uh, thanks again and have a great rest of your afternoon.